Hey guys, Zot here, and today we're going to be doing something a little different, and that's taking a look at one team in particular that dominated the recent AWC Spring Finals, with a composition we don't see that often. I'm of course talking about Cloud9. Snuts, Channimals, Wealthy Man, and Cubsy's performance as a team has allowed them to have great success, currently holding a substantial point lead in the North American standings as well as completely dominating the recent AWC Spring Cup LAN, not dropping a single series and taking out big names like Wildcard Gaming and Method Black on their way to the finals, where they take out the 2017 BlizzCon Champions ABC 4-0 in a best of 7, playing their famed Mage Lock Druid in every single game of the finals. In this video, we're going to be exploring just why their MLD is this strong, what they do differently, the adaptions they make, as well as just taking a look at their general playstyle. Let's start by taking a look at their talent choices as well as Azerite, as it's the little things that really make this team stand out. Like for instance, Chanimals' unique Azerite setup. He knows in this composition, he's going to be the target pretty much all of the time. So instead of the normal Azerite for Destruction Warlocks, he's prioritizing free Flashpoint and then free Overwhelming Power whilst picking up free resounding protections in the process. What this is going to do is it's going to make him a lot more durable thanks to the triple resounding protection, but will also give him a huge boost of haste when he's overwhelming power procs. This can help him out with faster fears, land in faster chaos bolts, and of course just buff his overall consistent damage coming from immolates. What he sacrifices for this however, is traits like crashing chaos and chaotic inferno, both of which are working entirely around chaos bolts. Chanimals knows he wouldn't be getting off a lot of bolts, and his talents and spec are tailor-made around that fact. Moving on to Wealthy Man next, we once again see the clever adaptions coming into play, as he knows he's going to be free casting a lot in this composition, and obviously teams will be looking to shut down a Destruction Warlock, so he's opted to take free Tunnel of Ice. This again only gains value if you can freely cast Frostbolts, something he knows he's going to be able to do regularly in this composition, just down to how big of a threat that Destruction Warlock is if left a free cast. To combine with this, he's also got two Flash Freeze and one Whiteout, picking up yet again free Overwhelming Power for that huge haste boost. Now, Wealthy Man has also taken some out of the ordinary talent choices. Instead of the standard pick of going Ebon Bolt, he's opted to take Frozen Touch. This again plays into their strength of a composition. He's going to be able to obviously cast Frost Bolts often, so the choice to pick up Frozen Touch is going to provide him with a more consistent Finger of Frost and Brain Freeze proc rate, a talent we don't often see mages pick up, due to how rare it is to cast Frost Bolts back to back in most Frost Mage comps right now. And lastly is Cubsy on the Restoration Druid. He's just got the standard Druid Azerite pick of Triple Grove Trending, however the clever changes we see in Cubsy's play is from his talent choices. Here is what a normal Druid talent choice would look like. However, Cubsy was for the most part opting to take Feral Affinity. He is able to do this because of his composition. He is confident that if he's focused, he'll consistently be getting pills as well as high pressure coming from his team, so therefore doesn't need the added defensive benefits from Guardian to survive. Usually when you see a Druid playing Feral Affinity, you can punish them easily by simply just tunneling them down. Cubsy and his team are confident enough in both his ability to survive and them as a team to be able to peel to keep him alive if he's focused. On top of this, we also see him making some even smarter choices. In the finals up against ABC, we saw Cubsy opt to take Spring Blossoms instead of Stonebark, something we've never seen a Druid really do. However, it makes complete sense. He's healing a Destruction Warlock, one of the least mobile classes in the game. This is going to provide a huge amount of healing over the course of a game, and pairs great with his Pharaoh affinity. He can just simply full hot Channimals, give him an efflorescence, and then just go for a restyle and open on the target. Clever talent and gearing choices are not the only thing that make Cloud9 stand out. Their ability to play as a team and create multiple win conditions also sets them above the rest. But let's take a look at their MLD in action now. So, those talent choices I mentioned, let's take a look at how they come into play. Starting with Cubsy's choice of Spring Blossom, instead of the standard Stone Bark. We see Channimals get caught into a full Kidney Shot, whilst Cubsy is caught into a full Polymorph, and Team ABC commit the Icy Veins. Now just watch Channimals health here. The enemy have crowd control onto the healer, and are popping strong offensive cooldowns, but his health is just not moving. This is all coming down to that clever choice of Spring Blossom, as throughout this whole onslaught, Channimals is just standing inside of the Shroom. Soon as the CC ends on Cubsy, he just then instantly jumps into cat form, rake stuns Asgarath, bashes Nixie, and then just retreats. Also, their aggression as a team is just insane. 
they play defensive as a team and offensive as a team. What I mean by this is that all three members will turn the switch and go full aggression. Just take a look at this clip here, where Cloud9 spot an opening. Now I'm going to circle Cubsy. Now in case you're confused, he is in fact a restoration druid and not a feral druid. He knows his team is fine, so he's just constantly pressuring inside of Catform. Before the enemy team has an opening, where they can swap onto him, he gateways away and looks to get into stealth again. Comes back out once more and then ends the game with a perfect bash. This also goes the other way as well. When they're in trouble, all three members look out for each other. For instance here when Cubsy is caught into a full polymorph and Chanimals is in trouble. Wealthy Man blocks his Cyclone, locks the re-polymorph onto Cubsy and then sheeps Alec on the mage, keeping Chanimals alive in a situation he would have otherwise died in. Team play like this is what defines a good team. Furthermore, what's unique with Cloud9 is that they also always create multiple win conditions for themselves. Their first win condition is always mana. They do a fantastic job at not allowing the enemy healer to drink, which in the current meta is a huge deal, as games are often decided on mana bars. Just look here for instance when Asgraf is trying to go for a drink. Chanimals already has his pet on him, but Cubsy the healer runs over to stop as well. This could put Cubsy in a vulnerable position however, but he's not worried as Chanimals double coils the hibernate and Wealthy Man locks the Ring of Frost on him. As always, playing perfectly as a team, allowing Cubsy free reign to play as aggressive as possible. It's plays like this that always allow them to maintain a mana lead. What also helps build this mana lead is their choices of Azurite. As you remember, Wealthy Man has gone for that huge turret spec with triple tunnel of ice and that frozen touch talent meaning his frostbolts are going to be doing increased damage and giving him a lot more procs than usual. And Channels is also focusing around that huge haste boost with flashpoint as well as overwhelming power, meaning both of them are going to be doing very strong consistent damage, which is of course going to be very taxing on the enemy healer's mana and always allowing them to have that win condition of mana. as even if they didn't kill here, just look at Cubsy. He's already positioned to go and drink to fall to secure the win condition. This is also made possible as Cloud9 are just so good at allowing Cubsy to consistently get off drinks, which again, I know I keep referring back to it, but it all stems back to that clever choice to take Spring Blossom. For instance here, Cubsy just puts down his efflorescence onto Chanimals and runs off for a drink whilst Chanimals Shadow Furies the casters and Wealthy Man looks to spam Polymorphs, allowing Cubsy to drink to full mana, whilst Chanimal loses zero health to secure that win condition of mana. But this is Cloud9 we're talking about. They don't put all their eggs into one basket and bank fully on that inevitable mana win condition. They also set up constant kill windows seemingly out of nowhere, like here where they punish Asgraf for playing Relentless, with a bash, into Infernal Stun, into Coil, whilst all three members of the team are DPSing him. And this game on Ashmane's Fall, where they first force Asgraf's Trinket with a Coil, out of form, into Bash from Cubsy again, whilst all committing for the kill once more, and then just later executing on this kill window perfectly, with a Wild Charge Bash from Downtown by Cubsy, into the Infernal Stun Coil, with a perfectly timed Shadow Fury on the DPS to stop any pills. During the setup, Chanimals is also so confident in his team's ability to execute 
that he commits both his Neverward and Unending Resolve to secure this kill. So, combine perfect team play, clever talent and Azerite adaptions, and just great overall synergy, and you've got a team that are only going to look stronger going forward in Battle for Azeroth. Thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a plus skill.